Good afternoon. Uh, this is Joe Flick with the Montana State Library, and um, I'm just going to say hello and then turn off my uh, camera. I just wanted to say hello and um, before we, we get going this afternoon, because this is another start to our six-part series on Aspen Basics. And we do break this out into six parts, not because Aspen is all that hard, actually, but there's a lot to cover and it gives you a chance to kind of practice a little in between each time. So go ahead and turn off my screen so you don't have to look at me and turn things over to Chuck, who is our tech guy. And um, Chuck's going to do the basic tour today and kind of walk through um, the ins and outs of how to get logged in. So go ahead, Chuck. We're not so, hearing you. Oh, there you are. So the first rule about this whole thing is when it asks you, do you want to continue on the recording? Don't click the leave button when you're the presenter. Just saying. Um, yeah. Okay. So I'm glad you got back in, Chuck, because it would have been a very um, difficult, awkward. Uh, awkward yes. Um, I probably could have managed, but I'd much rather have you present. So go ahead and share your screen again. Uh, you need to. Oh, I need to do that again. Excuse me. Okay, your your um, alter ego is currently a co-host. And this time, I won't cancel out of the meeting. <laughs> Good plan. Glad you're our tech guy, Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> eh, smile and nod. Okay. So thank you, Joe. Um, so we're here for the Aspen Basics course, the first one. Um, and I'm just gonna do a basic overview on Aspen. And honestly, it's gonna be a lot of the public facing stuff. And a lot of what Aspen does is public facing. Uh, can everybody hear me okay? Yes, we hear you just okay. fine. Perfect. So the first thing is when you wanna to go to Aspen in your address bar, always go to Aspen dot mt dot gov and that will always take you to aspen no matter where it might be uh, i know a lot of people try to remember the msl services dot mt dot gov i'll let you in on a little secret that's not going to be around a whole lot longer so always go to aspen dot mt dot gov um, we're shifting things around a little bit and so we want to make sure you can always get to aspen and that will always get you to Aspen, no matter what. Um, so I, this is sort of the guts of Aspen. Um, I should probably pull up some of my notes from the last time I did this so that we can actually get everything covered. Um, so we've opened our favorite browser, we've gotten to Aspen, and then without even logging in, we have all these features that are available to us already. Uh, so I'm gonna just start from the beginning and start with events, which in all honesty is probably 90% of what people use Aspen for. There we go. So some of you all that have been around for a while, this may look a little different depending on how long ago you logged in. I think we updated this in the past six months, maybe a year. Uh, we wanted to try to simplify things so that people could find the credits that they were trying to get. Um, so I mean, the basic layout is we have our calendar of events. You can move forward and backward in time. And down here at the bottom, we have a listing of more events that you can't actually see on the calendar, whether it's because it's in the future or off the calendar in the past. And you can scroll through and you can see which ones are online, what times, uh, and all that. If you wanted to search for something, I've tried to improve the search so that you can just put in a simple phrase. And it's not this month, but back in April 25th, that got added to the calendar. Here in a little bit, I'll show you why you'd want to see that that happened in the past. But since I'm not logged in right now, we won't see that button. 
Um, so that, that's the basic part of the calendar. Now let me reset it so we can see today's stuff. I'm just going to jump in, Chuck, and ask about why they're all the events on in the calendar are different colors. It's funny you should mention that. Over here on the side, we have a lovely key. Um, so we, we break events into event types. Sometimes that'll make it easier for you to find, although we don't really have a standard as to what we call each thing. Um, so like uh, today's Aspen Basics is in green because it's a continuing education um, category. Uh, let's see, we had Montana Land Information Grant Application uh, Program. And we decided to call that a deadline. So it's the burgundy color. Um, I'm trying to make it for things like MLA and other large conferences that I'll make the parent a conference. And each of those things either has sub meetings or continuing education credits in it. So that you can just kind of glance at the calendar and it will hopefully kind of make sense. Um, somebody pointed out to us the other day that I don't know what those colors are. And we realized that on the new page, we forgot to put the key on the side. So we put the key on the side, My, minor detail. Um, so let's say we've now found an event. And I think this Aspen Basics course is the course for me. It is the best event in the entire system. Could be biased, just saying. Um, once you click into that event, and again, we're still on the public facing side. We haven't logged in. Nothing. You can come in here. You can, again, see what kind of event it is. Uh, find out when it starts and when it ends. Hopefully, there'll be a basic description. Most, most of the time, we're pretty good about that. Um, whether it's an online event, I would show you an event that isn't online, but I would have to go back more than a year. And I'm going to guess we all know why. Um, because if it's not online, it will give you typically an address or directions on how to get there. Um, for actually for all events, we make it available that there could be an online link. So like today's link was to get to um, this Zoom meeting. After the event, Joe's been doing a fabulous job and I believe Amelia has also been participating in this. That link will actually change to a link to the Vimeo recording. So if you thought this was the best training ever and you wanted to come back and review it, you could come back and look at the event from the calendar, click the link, and it would take you to the recording and you could watch this to your heart's content. Um, we also have to talk about, you know, more exciting things for you all to be watching than this presentation. Um, since we're not logged in, the registration status does come up and say you need to log in to actually be able to register. Now keep in mind, almost all the Montana State Library things are open to the public. You don't have to register. Most of the time, this link will get you into the event. Uh, like Joe said, we have a waiting room, so please make sure your name is a reasonable name in the meeting. But a lot of people really worry about, well, I wasn't able to register. And you know, 10 minutes before the event, oh, I just found out about this and I can't register for it. Don't worry about it. Again, almost all of our stuff is available to everyone. Go ahead, hit that link, join us, and we'll sort out the rest later. Uh, we don't want you missing an event because you know Aspen decided you hadn't logged in or you weren't connected or whatever. Um, let's see, some additional information. If there's continuing education credits available, it will show you. In this case, we have, oh, only half a credit of technology. I'm better than that, Joe. Um, who the president, uh, trainers are, if, who the if we end up spending a whole hour, I'll change that for everybody to a full credit. So don't worry, Chuck, but <laughs> we only probably won't go to a quite a full hour. I was kidding. <laughs> um, uh, contact person. So if for some reason, say you can't register or you have to register externally, uh, we always have a contact person so you know who to get a hold of. And not all events have it, but we have the events resource section down here at the bottom where any of you all that were here earlier didn't see these because I just added them right before the event. But 
just you know helpful handout and other links that may be associated with the event not all events have them but this makes it real easy for us to be able to get you handouts and information about things so that's in a nutshell that's events now the next important thing to know is without having to type aspen.mt.gov if you come over here and click this search aspen button that always takes you back to the main Aspen page. So then we'd be able to go on and do searching for other things like organizations. Now, right now, this is listing all the organizations that we have in Aspen. I got an interesting question yesterday that somebody wanted to know all of the libraries in a given federation. Uh, and since this page, if you've not been here before, was recently redone, again, to make that search easier, we want to give you more of that Google or Bing experience, except unlike Bing, you'll actually find something. Um, and so that you can just type something in and you'll get the best results out of Aspen. So they wanted all the people in, let's say, the Pathfinder. Um, Federation. And I'm picking on something that's not just a library name, because a lot of times, if you already know the library name, it's not that hard to find the library if you know the library name. But if you don't necessarily know what the library is called, but you know that it's, let's see, you know, in Fort Benton, well, you could do a search just as easy up here for Fort Benton, and it would give you all the libraries that are listed as being in Fort Benton. Um, so then I was able to go back to the person and say, you can actually get all the Federation libraries just by typing in the Federation name. Let's see, so let's... Okay, so you'll see that we actually got for Fort Benton quite a few. Uh, results. Now, some of that is because of how it does the search. It's actually going to look for Fort and Benton in the entire thing. So if at any, any text field in any of these things, you know, Fort Shaw Elementary, it had a fort in it, so it was a valid answer. But you'll notice that it comes back with a ranking, and the highest results are what we were looking for. So just it's a real quick and easy way to find out things. Now, if you can't spell, much like me, that's a problem. I haven't gotten that part solved yet. But uh, if you can basically spell and have a little bit of information about what you're looking for, you'll actually do a really good job finding things. And say there's too many things, we have a bit of an advanced filter here that lets you limit things to say only public libraries, if that's what you are looking for. So you can really do a granular search and yep, there we go. The best result that involves Fort Benton and a public library is Shoto County Library, which makes sense. So again, we wanna go back to our main page and we'll search Aspen. Uh, the Montana State Library has many services that we do, and we'll just go with what a definition of a service in Aspen is. A service is a collection of organizations that do something. Um, so while some of these may not look like services as such, I mean, sure, Montana Courier Alliance, that is a service that is provided. But the 2021 ELSA Award well, it's not really a service, but it is something that is awarded to individual organizations. So since we want to track several organizations, the easiest way for Aspen to do that is through services. Um, so you're looking on how to contact about the Montana Courier Alliance. You could come in to the services page and easily find uh career information, which whew, it's got Kara's name on there. So I don't have to be the one that gets all the emails. However, if you submit a ticket, good chances, I'll get the email. 
And then you can see all the people that are associated with a given service. Um, go back, we'll search Aspen again. Then we have the other fun one, positions and people. We're always looking for someone. So again, we've tried to simplify the search because some of you all may have seen this before and it was like three pages of search terms and all that. And either people didn't use it, they'd submit me a ticket to find something, which I mean, I got no problem doing a search for you, but it's probably not the most efficient use of your time. Um, so we can come in here and we try to, again, simplify this and do a big search on everybody we have in the system with the ability to do some filtering. Um, if you find that there's filters you desperately need on any of these pages, always submit a ticket and we'll see about getting those added. But we found that the original kitchen sink approach of being able to filter every field possible, there were some fields people just didn't care about. So it was taking up a lot of screen space and confusing people. So we wanted to go back to the simple, you have a search box, you'll find something. So let's go ahead and see if we can find anybody with this name in our inventory. Why look, we have a Joe Flick there. There's so only one, there's only one Flick. And the whole inventory, I'm just saying. It can only be one. Yeah, it can only be one. <laughs> Any more than that would be overkill. Okay. <laughs> um, so again, you can filter this um, or let's see, I bet. Which this one will be tough because it's got a lot of words in it. Um, and it's, again, it's going to try to find a search that works with all of those. So if there was somebody named Lewis or Clark or uh, any of those, they would also show up. But you can also see we got pretty well, 358 responses, but the top hits were the Lewis and Clark Library. So if you were looking for someone at the Lewis and Clark Library, you'd be able to go through pretty quickly and find them. Uh, other problem is some of these like Montana State Library, they're showing up because we're in Lewis and Clark County. So it technically was a valid response. It just may not have been what you were looking for. So let's see. So if we go back. Does anybody have find... any questions about um, the search or have you used the search function in, in Aspen to find information about a library? And then you can put your questions in the chat box or you can unmute your microphone and jump in. Yeah, so, Joe, like you said, it's really handy when I'm trying to track down somebody I meet at a conference because all their contact information's on there. Yes, provided they've kept their contact information updated, which is the topic of next um, the next session, which Pam is here, she's going to be um, hosting that one on how to update your personal information. So thank you, Jeannie. I've also found that if you're, um, you know, you're looking for stuff um, that the Google search works also really well into Aspen. If you put whatever you're searching for in Google and add aspen.mt.gov, it will take you right to that. Um, so I just discovered that one day. I don't know. Well, Google is also good at finding some of the really old links in the library. And as we find them, we try to get everything to redirect you to the right spot in Aspen. Yeah, so it's... if you ever find something that isn't working, open a help ticket and tell Chuck. And over in the chat box, Colleen is saying, I've used it to find a library's email, mailing address, phone number. Yep, the hours that they're open um, should, should be up to date there. Our consultants work very hard with libraries to keep that inf institution information up to date. Um, so lots of good and information. I guess I did sort of glaze over this. I didn't actually take you into an organization page but let's take a look at. 
I see what you did there. You extend, you expanded how many you can see on a page. Yep. Good. So you can either scroll through the pages or you can expand how many uh, at the bottom of each of our lists. Yeah, it, it defaults to 10 items per page, but you can make that 20, 50, or like all. I mean, I think maybe 100 is an option too. Um, so if I say wanted to find out about the Missoula Public Library, I could easily come here uh, and I happen to pick on them because they also happen to have branch libraries. So for any of you all that have branch libraries or are interested in finding a branch library for a given library, if they have one, they would be listed on the side here in Aspen. So you'd be able to find out, oh, that's right. They are a branch of so-and-so. Um, I have not verified whether or not this information is correct or not because I happen to have recently found out the Missoula Public Library moved. Um, Okay, not recently, but I just recently saw the library. So, um, gives pretty you a recent. bunch of. Hmm? It, it's pretty recent. They have a new library, yeah. Um, and, and I will point out that updating your institution's name is the subject of the third class in this series. So, if there's information in your institution that's outdated, come to that class and you'll learn how to fix it or open a help ticket and let's get it fixed right now. <laughs> wow, and there's a lot of people working for the Missoula Public Library. That's the other thing. And we're, I'm honestly, I'm working on a better way to organize those because there are some libraries that have quite a few people. I mean, they may only work a couple hours a week, but they're staff. So they get added to the staff list. And so the whole list of everybody that you put in there is there. Those are also people that can easily claim continuing education credits because I can associate their EPAS, which we'll talk about here in a second, with, um, with Aspen, and that will then let them claim credits, and then they get to work with Joe on getting certification. Okay, so sorry, I sort of skipped over looking at the main page there for um, organizations from the organization search. We come over here to search. Now, like services were a group of organizations, committees are a group of people. Um, this is kind of evolving right now. That's why it's actually a really simplified view. Um, Aspen can do it. It's just, it wasn't completely finished for committees. So we're working on updating that, but if you wanted to find out who was in the Montana State Library Commission, because that actually is a very important question that you'd be amazed at how often that's asked. If you come over there, you can easily, that will take you to their main landing page and you can find out who the members are. Now, you'll also notice that we're kind of in Aspen, kind of not in Aspen, but that's again, because we're still working on improving the features for committees. Um, but again, this is a really good way to find somebody in the commission in, uh, let's see, we just moved over MLIAC. We have Network Advisory Council, I think it is. Um, we, we're trying to get all of those listed over here in committees. Uh, we can also see some past committees. I'm been a big advocate for that because just because they happened 10 years ago doesn't make them less important to find out about. So I've been trying to make sure that as committees come and go, we do keep a record that they existed and who was there and what they've done. Um, let's see what else we've got. Then the most important part, how the heck do I do that in Aspen? Well, if you can't figure it out, we've got a big button for help. That will take you over to the Zoho help page. Now, in the coming months, we're probably gonna be switching from Zoho to a different platform. Uh, but again, that help button will always get you to help. I will always make sure that you can submit a ticket or get to knowledge base articles by clicking there. Um, and submitting a ticket is as easy as submit a ticket. Then 
usually I get back to you within about five to 10 minutes. And if you're really lucky, I have solved the problem. If not, it'll take me a day or two, but I always get the problem solved for you. If you just- He does, he always gets the problem solved for you. If and you just have a question, but- If you're just wondering how to do something, this is also where we put in all of our little tip sheets, isn't it, Chuck? Yes. And if, I mean, I got no problem. If you want to ask me, let's see, let's go into the Aspen help section here. If you want to ask me how to register for an event, I'll answer your question. But if you want to do that at 10 o'clock on Saturday night, chances are good. I'll probably still answer your question and then I'll get yelled at on Monday for having done something on a Saturday or a Sunday. But the question may already be answered over in one of our knowledge base articles. Um, so depending on, you know, because who doesn't get the urge at three in the morning to log into Aspen and register for an event, um, you'd be able to come over here and get that information. Let's see, which then we can come back over here to Aspen. So those are all the public facing bits about Aspen. I am going to touch just a couple of things about what happens when you log in. Very, very superficial, nothing major. Um, but I do want to see, show you that some things do change a little bit once you've logged in, which could be something that you need to do. When you log into Aspen, always click the login on the right-hand side of the page. Once more, always click the login on the right-hand side of the page. If you click the one on the top of the page, that will take you back to mt.gov. It will log you into mt.gov. It will not log you into Aspen. So even though all the pages look the same like you're logging in, it doesn't log you into Aspen. So then we'd come over, I'd say I want to log in to Montana ePass. Now, I just I'm want to jump in here. This is Joe. You know, that that login that is at the top of the screen, even right now, is is fixed in the system that we have to operate in. And we can't change that. So we can't redirect it. So we just keep trying to remind you, use the yellow box to log in. And um, you'll only make that mistake a couple times before you realize that the other login button doesn't really get you where you need to go. The so state just of emphasizing Montana, that, yeah. The state of Montana forces us to have this stuff at the top as exactly how they want it. We can't do anything about that. And most of the stuff at the bottom of the page, also they force us. So anything in between there, we can do, which is why our login is on the side there. Another thing I'm gonna mention, um, most of you all will log in with your Montana ePass. Right now, it's called ePass. In June, we're changing from ePass to something called Okta. Everything's going to essentially operate the same. Your usernames and passwords are getting migrated over. Everything will be fine, and I'll get a million tickets for it. I know it, but we will be changing it does the same thing, just our contract with ePass has expired and we got an updated version of something and it's called Okta. Um, I'm actually really looking forward to that because that should open up some possibilities that might make it actually easier for you all to be able to log into things like Aspen. Um, so I'm logged in. I know that because it knows who I am and gives me this information up here. So now the big thing I want to show you about that's changed is now that I'm logged in, if I go over to the events page, insert Jeopardy music here. Okay. Since I'm logged in, look, if I was going to the Public Library Directors Institute, it might not be named as best. This essentially registers you for the event. But you can come down here and click a button that will add the continuing education for older events um, or register you for events that are in the future real quick and easy. Um, so, I mean, just any- I, This is Joe again, I'm gonna jump in, sorry, but I think this has been a great addition that, that Chuck has made to Aspen since 
then C's been working on it because you can scroll back through the last year, last 12 months in this list. Is it going back any further? I think I opened it up to the full four years. Ah, okay. So the last four years. So if you attended an event and you made a note, put it on a sticky and you just found it on the bottom and, you know, below your desk and said, oh my gosh, I forgot to claim credit for that. You can cycle back because these are all in reverse chrono chronological order. Find that event and just click on the button. This is a lot easier than the other ways you might want to collect. There are several ways you can post your CE credits in Aspen, but this is easily one of the easiest ones so now sometimes i'll get a question of well i attended that event but i can't add the credit um like the aspen basics course that we're doing today well i can't add the credit because i've already claimed the credit so if for some reason it's still not showing up for you that's when you go back to that main page you hit the question mark and you submit a ticket and chuck fixes it for you um we ran into a problem the other day where it decided, oh, yes, well, because I'm a computer and I'm smart, I'm going to give the date to this event as January 1st, 1900. Well, for those of you all that aren't great at math, that's more than four years ago. So, yes, they claimed the credit, but has they couldn't see the credit because it expired quite a while ago. Yeah, a so, century ago. Um, I, I went in and I fixed that and it was all good. Every once in a while we run into bugs like that. I just um, want to just add to that. Uh, that's one of the questions we do get a lot from people who are trying to add a credit and they don't see the option to add it. And And I would just suggest go and look at the list of credits that you already have and um, chances are it's already there. And that's why we've, we've we, a couple of months ago, we had a lot of trouble with duplicate credits and um, in Aspen and we've, we think we've cleaned, fixed that up. So. We're working on it. If you, but if you ever see a problem or you think something shouldn't, isn't right, um, just open open a help ticket. Chuck, as you can tell, is very friendly, <laughs> um, and we're oftentimes it's your help ticket that help us um, identify a problem and fix it for everybody else. Which I'll, I'll do some shameless plugging at MLA. I'm doing a presentation about Aspen where I'm actually asking you all the users for some input on, you know, when I go to the calendar, it just really annoys me that I have to do X. Oh, I hadn't even thought about that. We could do it this other way. And I wanna be able to get feedback from you all. You all have to use it um, on things like that. So no matter what it is, don't hesitate to send me a help ticket because, you know, sometimes that means, oh yeah, okay. I do need to reverse the order of the buttons or that should be at the top of the page and not the bottom of the page. And uh, real changes happen from what you all give me as feedback. Um, guess the only other real thing that's gonna change uh, if you're logged in would be something like on the organization search page. If Say, okay, six months from now, we want to have a grand post pandemic uh, party of some kind, and you want to invite everybody in your federation. I'm picking on Pathfinder, it's the easiest for me to spell. So I've got 17. You could click into each one of these and go and get their information on how to contact them, or you could just export the results to an Excel sheet. You have to be logged in to export. We do not just allow anybody to do that. So that'll give you the, actually, let's see if that will share. Hey, I did share the whole screen. So it'll give you the organization name, their address, their primary contact information. So that makes it easy for you all if you need to, you know, get a hold of five or six libraries without having to scribble down every every contact and clicking back and forth. That will give you the ability to get that easily. Uh, but again, that can only happen if you're logged in. We don't want to let just bots randomly downloading stuff. Um, so public facing, that's or 
once you're logged in on the public facing, that's about the only other thing that changes for you. Other than now you have your Aspen admin, which takes you to your main page, which you don't get to find out about this time because we have some other wonderful presenters in the future that will tell you about this. And Pam is here. Pam, um, you're going to be on in two weeks going over all the the dirty details of Aspen admin and yes. updating personal information in Aspen. Yes. So um, I want everybody to come to that one too, because that's what we use that a lot is to find out, you know, where people are or email addresses, or I like people to have pictures up there so we know what they look like. Yes. That will be two weeks. So come back. Um, I'm going to stop our recording now. And Perfect. so if you have, if you are viewing the recording, be sure to go in to Aspen and claim your credit. And for um, thanks so much for your time, Chuck. That was a terrific. I appreciated all those lurid details, which is what I promised everybody today. And uh, hopefully everybody else did too. So we're, um, thanks so much.